All right, going live on video. Stand by for audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So today, I am bringing on quite an influencer for you. At least he's an influencer in my world. This gentleman knows a ton about podcasting. So we're going to geek out a little bit today about podcasting, but like we always do. But let me dig a little bit deeper into him for you. So this gentleman, yes, is a podcaster, is a speaker and founder, and is a PhD in digital education, which I want to dig into that a lot more. I don't even know you can even do that. Uh, he and his team run a network a podcast on everything from mountain biking to space exploration, and they teach how it's done through their content at thepodcasthost.com. So for those that want to move fast, uh, they offer courses and coaching inside the Podcast Host Academy, and then provide the tools to do it with um, ali2.com or you know, their, their podcast maker app. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to dig into this mountain biking fan because I'm also a mountain biking fan. Without further ado, Colin, sir, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. So for our listeners and actually video watchers when this goes live on YouTube, you, sir, are coming to me from Scotland. Indeed. And you guys do have some epic mountain biking over there. We do. Just, just going to throw that out there because I, I'm a huge mountain biker. And you watch a lot of these pro videos and they shoot a lot of footage over in your country. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, uh, you couldn't say Scotland's world class at too many things, particularly sport. I mean, we're pretty poor at most football. Yeah, we're doing terrible at the football and the rugby just now. But mountain biking is somewhere where we, um, we do excel. Yeah, we've got uh, the seven, um, seven stains are the kind of most famous trails here, where we've got seven trails around the southwest of Scotland. You say they're called seven stains? Seven stains, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, as, as like you, you, they're, they're stained with blood from the <laughs> aggressiveness, or I don't know. <laughs> could be, could be, probably, almost certainly, yes. But a stain is actually uh, the sort of, um, it's the way you say stone in, Scot in the Scottish accent. It's like, mm. oh, you see these stains over here? I'm going to throw a stain at you, like. So it's, <laughs> um, so seven stains, because there's a big stone, massive big stone, each of them that represents each of the trails. Uh, so you can go around and get a picture with each of these stones. Nice. And the trails themselves are, yeah, proper world-class trails and great stuff over here, yeah. Well, and most of the content that I've seen has been more, and again, for our listeners, guys, we're going to geek out a little bit on mountain biking right now. Um, <laughs> I have only dabbled in downhill mountain biking, right, okay, but yeah. most of the video content I've seen is downhill specific it seems that they show off over there because of your rocky terrain like you don't need crazy altitude to pull off a really sick downhill run because you just you want that terrain and the rock and the diversity and just be able to go fast and not not injure yourself <laughs> yeah yeah indeed yeah yeah we've got a good one up at um uh, ben nevis which is the biggest mountain in scotland uh, it's the nevis range and you've got a gondola going up there it's the only lift served trail in scotland a permanently lift trail served oh, in scotland so that's so commitment that's nice. yeah but it's but it's a proper hardcore like it would if i tried it i would die literally <laughs> it would, it's terrible like, so there, there, there's not enough uh, personal protective gear is what you're saying it's not, pretty bad not in the world to save me from that no like 20 foot drops and stuff like that so you need to know what you're doing um, but luckily they built a they built a red trail as well so that's the black that's the proper downhill but they built a, a red trail from the top too so that's quite mm -hmm. nice much more easy going so what do they signify red as over there is that would you consider red in your country more intermediate or red, or is it i would say is advanced you tend to get you've got green blue and red so green's easy blue's intermediate red's hard and then you've got black which is expert i suppose Yes. Well, it's like, okay, so if I can cross-reference this to skiing, I, yeah. I spent 11 years as a USSA ski race coach in my free time. Yeah. Uh, I like to multitask. But <laughs> in skiing, for example, your black run or your black diamonds, those are the more aggressive and more advanced ski runs on a ski mountain. Then obviously, if you're going backcountry, there is no color for that. You're, you're off the grid. You're in the backcountry, and yeah. you want to go out there, you go out there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but usually in the ski world, it, it goes black for the for the hardest, and then uh, if there's any red mixed in, that's usually warning signs. And then and then you have like the blue for the intermediate, and then the green for the beginner. So I don't know how much how much winter sports you do or not. But. Skiing as well, actually. Yeah, just back from uh, Morzine in the Alps uh, last week. So yeah, jealous. Yeah, so jealous. <laughs> well, you might appreciate this. So uh, this time, oh no, wait, hold on. This is February. So in, I'm, we're recording this in February right now. So in March next year, I'll be going to Banff, Canada. Oh, very nice. 
and we're doing a heli skiing wedding. A, a, wait a minute, a wedding? Based that's, that's my wedding. Oh, your wedding? Oh, oh hell yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like traditional weddings. <laughs> that sounds like my kind of wedding. I have to admit. <laughs> I, I, I have to live to my brand, man. Like live the fuel is like, it's out there. It's aggressive. It's, you got to do things different. And my fiance and I were like, we're big. She, come, she grew up in a skiing family. Uh, okay. uh, when we met, I got her more aggressive into the biking. And she does triathlons now. And we're both CrossFitters. And I'm like, listen, babe, what do you want to do? I was like, if you're going to spend that kind of money, like, it, should be, it should be an adventure. And so she's like, yeah. And then we mentioned it to her parents. And their parents are like, yeah, we want to go heli skiing. <laughs> so so we're, we're planning a heli skiing so, wedding. So how does that actually, are you going to just jump out of the helicopter in your tux, like dragging your sort of best man behind you and the mother-in-law and all that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, yeah, if you're going traditional. But no, we're not doing any of that. Uh, we will get like new like ski gear for the event, you know, obviously. But we're not doing the tux, the dress, none of it. Right. We actually, I wanted to get married in like, you know, the helicopter drops you off on a backcountry peak and then you ski back to civilization. That's the whole game plan, right? So I wanted to just land and then do the ceremony there, like on a remote mountain. And then as you start planning this, this is a whole adventure just to plan it because then you're like, wait a minute, her parents aren't going to go ski what we can ski. Yeah. So we got to send the helicopter to like different mountains. So that's, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Then I say, well, I had one of my fellow race coach friends, uh, Kelsey, shout out to her. I had her, she went and got internationally ordained. So oh, she's, <laughs> so she can now marry anybody in the world. <laughs> We're very committed. We're very committed. Um, but for, I, for a good cause, that, I mean, that, that sounds like someone worth committing to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here, but here's the best part. Now I'm hearing that possibly in Alberta, even if you're internationally ordained, uh, it doesn't count. So now we have to dig into that. I don't know if like, she can even marry us. Then uh, in order to make it easier for the guests, like her, her, because there's not that many people going to come to something like this. We'll have like an after party back here in the state of Pennsylvania here in the US of A. But for the people who have the, the gumption to come out here, hey, game on. Uh, but, so then I was going to do it at the helipad where the helicopters take off from. And they said, um, no, they said we have other people coming in here, other parties. We c it's really hard to just lock this place down just for a wedding unless yeah. you're loaded. So I said, okay, well, so we're looking at other ways to pull this off. Uh, but we will be having a heli skiing trip and there, we will be getting married one way or another in Banff, Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's amazing. <laughs> I've only been to Canada once. It was uh, Vancouver to uh, ski. Uh, where was it? Whistler, of course, and it was amazing. So yeah, I'm very jealous. I, I'm very jealous because my friends are going there right now because they have better snow than anybody else. Our trip is planned in three weeks. We're flying out on the 28th. We'll be in there for 10 days in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So right now, Colorado's kind of eh. We're, we're, we're really hoping it's going to keep dumping fresh snow over the next couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, they yeah. still don't have the, all the back bowls in Vail open yet. Really? So okay. it's, they're having a rough year. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a few rough years over here, actually. That was, Morzine's one of the lower uh, resorts in the Alps, one of the biggest ones, but it's quite low down and they've really struggled the last few years. This year, when we were over there, they were getting an absolutely massive dump of snow and we, actually the weather was bad. It was like the first two days we got out fine, uh, a bit of blue sky, but mostly cloudy. And then the last two days, it actually rained. Hmm. <laughs> I've never been rained on on a ski hill, so it wasn't the best. It's, well, see, I know that is very common here in the Northeast, uh, where, I, where I coach it's we joke around that if you could ski here in northeast usa yeah you can pretty much ski anywhere because we have what's called man-made ice so because <laughs> if it's not snowing we've got the snow machines to make it and you got the rain that comes in every so often because i've been on the hill I, I literally last weekend we had a, a, our annual memorial race i don't i don't coach anymore but i show up for the big race i can't stay away forever i throw on one of the old coaching jackets i go out there i help them run the race and yeah it's awesome because it's, it's in memory of a kid, one of our kids who had uh, died on the mountain in, back in 1997. So we created a memorial race in his memory ever since. So we had 179 kids racing all day long from surrounding mountains. It was, yeah, yeah it was, a, but then of course it's, then it, it starts snowing all day. Then it switches to freezing rain, which actually is great for racing, by the way. You want, you want a good, hard, fast surface. You don't want fresh snow. 
And then it switched back to rain a little bit and then back to snow by the end of the race. It was the craziest weather the last weekend. So, um, yeah, I've been there, done that. And I would, I just prefer either don't snow at all or snow, but do not rain on me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't even have my waterproof gloves with me. I was just, I was wringing them out with water by the end. It was terrible. Uh, you have, you have special goggles for that? Oh. Yeah, gloves. I said, sorry. Oh, gloves. Oh Yeah. I will tell you. Um, well, good. You could back this up. When it, whether it comes to podcasting, because we are you know, podcasters talking here today, Indeed. whether it's podcasting, biking, or skiing, it does come down to the gear. And when you have the right gear, it's pretty awesome. So good point on the gloves. People underestimate the power of a good pair of gloves. So, Well, I mean, if you want to get into anything for, um, to allow you to spend money, uh, then Probably actually golf is probably the highest for that, isn't it? But if you don't want to be boring and walk about a golf course, then mountain biking is second to that, I think, um, in terms of just the amount of shiny things that you can buy, the amount of different types of clothes you can buy for it. It's so many specialists. Well, uh, dare I ask, what do you have? For a bike, I've got yeah. a Cove Hummer. Ooh. So a titanium Cove Hummer that I spent about three years trying to find. So I, got, I, I was searching out a, a titanium Cove Hummer frame because I'd heard so many good things about this thing. I was looking for a Cove Hummer, heart, um, sorry, I was looking for a titanium hardtail. Yeah. I tracked this thing down secondhand. Um, the other end of the country, bought it on eBay and I had to get it shipped and everything. Um, but spent about six months building it up Mm-hmm. Um, just bit by bit, just because I'd spent so much in the frame itself, I had to buy all the other bits slower. Well, the frame is is everything, man. I yeah, mean, yes, right. your your component yeah. package is is right there, but yeah. Yeah. you yeah. got to love your frame. Oh yeah, but it was it was great fun building it. I've I've always enjoyed building bikes, and that was my kind of um, my final project. I felt it was just that was going to last me for years. So no, I love it. Such a good bike. Uh, and I went for a, I went for the um, eleven by one as well, which is no sorry Ooh. ten by one. I wasn't quite on eleven by that point. So no, now see now everybody's all about the eleven by one. So yeah, and again for our cool. listeners, guys, none of this is on his website, the podcast com. Just we're just geeking out on biking, but um, <laughs> it is a good lesson to learn that if you go and buy nicer mountain bikes nowadays, uh, picture the gears on your bike. He's referring to a one gear in the front where your pedals and your cranks are. And then they're back. We call it the cassette. It's a set of gears, right? So they've pretty much the whole industry has flipped because back I used to have a three by and then a two by, yeah, yeah. and now it's a one by. And then it's like, hey, how many gears can we jam into the back of that bike? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's an eleven by one or eleven one. So it's um. And then the, uh, my one buddy just picked up a new a new bike. I'm not kidding you. The largest gear on the back is this big. Oh yeah, like the we call it the back. screaming eagle. It's just so <laughs> huge. And then the rest of the cassette, the next gear down is like almost a half an inch in, mm-hmm. and then it's the rest of the cassette. And I was like, yeah. "What is that?" Like, <laughs> that's your downhill acceleration gear. That's the yeah. That's the I was like, "This is <laughs> just the components." I, I geek out on this. I love yeah. it. I can't help it. And you're right, the shiny things. Admittedly, though, my road bike is more shiny. My mountain bike. I, it, it's supposed to get dirty. I, I do detail it here and there, but I like to let, I like to get that thing all grimed up a little bit. So, oh, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not good enough by half about cleaning it afterwards as well. I think it's mine's hanging in the garage at the moment, actually covered in mud, which is bad. And we know better, right? Because like, Oh, well, do you lube your stuff? I'm like, well, do you, you got to strip the mud off before you can even lube it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the trouble. <laughs> no, my, uh, my road, I do have a road bike, but it's relegated to being an exercise bike, basically sitting on my uh, turbo trainer. That's there you what go. It's for the winter yeah yeah see tra- uh, again ladies and gentlemen it's winter time here and i literally have ice sitting outside my window and uh it's i don't have my trainer set up right now and i feel weird because i can't do my off-season training as i like to yeah. call it because I, I i was a i don't know if you have this sport over there well do your gyms and fitness centers over there do you have what's called spinning do you have spinning classes oh, yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah so i taught that for like five six years like i'm a cool. Johnny G instructor who was Johnny G is like one of the, at least here in the USA was one of the founders of creating spinning. So, okay. uh, I was certified by his organization. Uh, but that was great. I used to, I used to wake up when I was in my corporate job days and go teach a 6am class or a 5:30am class, shower at the gym, get changed and go to my, you know, professional thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good way of getting in your workout, uh, but being paid for it. It's yes. I mean, you didn't get paid squat. It was like $20, $20 US per class. But I was like, I'm going to take, I actually, the only reason why I became certified, my instructor who taught that early morning program, she was going to have a baby and they couldn't find somebody to replace the course and they were going to close that time slot. And I'm like, well, that's my morning coffee. Yeah. So <laughs> I said, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to go get certified and take it over. 
<laughs> and I was actually the only, you could probably appreciate this. Um, most spinning instructors aren't actually cyclists. Like they don't actually ride a bike in the real world. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I found that most instructors actually don't own, even own a bike or if they do, it's, they don't actually do it like you and I do it. So, okay. uh, I, I just find it intriguing. <laughs> yeah. I went, I went to a spin class once and I, I was told, I was re recommended that I could do this, but it turned out that when I turned up with my cleats, like with my proper cycling shoes, everyone looked at me like I was a right weirdo. <laughs> so one night you see our bikes were set up with one side of the pedal, you know, standard toe basket. Yeah, yeah. So other side of the pedal had the integrated cleat feature. Yeah, so yeah. I was one, I mean, obviously I used my cleated shoes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, that's the way I roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that was, my class was mainly full of um, middle-aged ladies, um, all credit to them getting their exercise in, but they, um, yeah, they didn't enjoy my, uh, my Lycra and cleat clad feet. It was, <laughs> it, was uh, it was ruining their, their ride. Now, have you ever, this interesting, interesting segue here. So have you ever taken these topics, whether it be podcast, you know, in the podcast world, cause you are, you've been around this a lot longer than I have. So in the podcast host world, again, ladies and gentlemen, the podcast host.com, um, you, have you ever talked about spinning? I mean, is that a topic that comes up ever? <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, no. This is the first time I think I've talked about that in a podcast. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a win there, a unique one. Um, no, I mean, we do, we do try and tie in personal stories. We do try, with, so with PodCraft, we keep it, PodCraft is our how to podcast podcast. And we okay. try and keep that as, it's a really focused one because it's based around that seasons-based format where we really keep it focused on the topic. And that one of the USPs or the unique selling points of that show is that you get your nugget of learning in as quick a time as possible with a few case studies, a few stories and some tasks at the end. So mm. we do keep that really on track. And it's, yeah. you know, we have a, a series of 10 episodes, say, that cover um, how to launch your first episode. And episode six will be how to write your podcast script. And we really keep really narrowly to that but you know you always bring in little stories every now and again don't you like this podcast i was working with last week who which was about spinning which created their script in this way and that kind of helps people relate to it but no you're right I, i've i've not actually often done a kind of standard um rambly type podcast like two friends speaking in a basement type of thing so it's right like, yeah it's not stuff that's come up often well it, it's interesting because i was um and actually while we're talking about this i'm going to go ahead and switch over to a screen share for our video watchers because here's his site the podcasthost.com and actually what he's referring to here is if you go to the our podcast section on the tool bar you've got podcraft you got mountain bikes apart you got the uk business startup and you got the numbers game so obviously we're referring to the podcraft so um now how long has the podcraft been up i mean so it's a funny story around that really in that uh, i started it that was my very first attempt at podcasting back in 2008 so i actually started that show technically in 2008 but wow. it was because uh, it, i was teaching at university at the time so that's how i got into podcasting i was actually um I was a technology enhanced le learning lecturer, which explains that PhD you mentioned a wee while ago. Um, so I, I taught lecturers how to, how to teach better with technology. And podcasting was this fashionable thing that came up. You know, it started back 2004, five-ish, but it didn't really, it kind of came into education, maybe 2007, 2008. And I was asked to look into it at the time so that we could teach our lecturers how to use it. So I created a season of 10 episodes which was to teach people how to get their first episode out there. And that is the first season of PodCraft. But really, I taught that for about five years in a row. So I kept redoing that season over and over and over again hmm. um, to the extent where I left the university in about uh, 13, 14 no more earlier than that, maybe 12 actually. And, um, and then that became the start of my own podcraft as opposed to, you know, the university talk course. So it's, I've been doing it for a lot longer than it looks like on iTunes, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Well, I mean, if you think way back, it's funny because you, you just kind of joked around about it being fashionable or stylish. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's hilarious because this show, I launched it September, 2016. Yeah. And that's nothing. You said 2008. <laughs> so it's like you could literally be considered a, one of the fellow founders of, of really helping grow podcasting. Cause this goes back, that's before John Lee Dumas, right? Yeah. By a long shot. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Like here, are you back? Is that back when, um, 
Oh, who's the, one of the other big influencers that does his own teachings? I don't really follow him. I follow you more. Um, so a little plug to you. Yeah, no, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly that, that's the thing though, like podcast, when is it actually listed? I wonder if I've, I can't, probably don't have it. Oh no, I do. I've got iTunes here. See the first season listed at the moment for podcast is actually, uh, if I click here and go right back to the start, I bet you it's only 2014. Yeah, started 2014. It's listed just now. Okay. But um, I'd been teaching, so that was like the end of the five years or so. So when I left the university and launched it as a public thing, as opposed to just within the university. But yeah, back then, 2009, I was listening to. There weren't many podcast teachers around. There was people like um, you know Adam Curry and um, the guys from Libsyn and Blueberry were around at that point, yep. starting to sort of teach a bit more. But there wasn't really any of the yeah the kind of existing crop. Has Lipson and Blueberry been around the same amount of time? And again, to our listeners, you may not know what we're talking about, but these are all like key, I guess, platforms and supporting software, if you want to call it that way, for the yeah. podcaster world. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Emily, I yeah. don't use either of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> who'd you go with? Out of interest? Uh, I'm actually on um, Mark Asquith's platform. Ah, cool. Podcast, Podcast websites. Perfect. So, yeah. which I mean, Emily, maybe they do use that on the back end, and I don't even know it. I don't know. They don't use Lipson. As far as I know, I don't think they do. I think no. Mark has built that all themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I decided to go outside the box. I wanted to see if this turnkey thing was going to make my life easier and tried it out. And I've been on it ever since. So, but it's not for everybody. Some people, like I literally had this tug of war now. Where I'm like, man, I see people showing off their lips and stats. And I'm like, I can't do that. I mean, I have access to my stats, but I, so I, I have this tug of war every once in a while. Where I'm like, man, what it would it be like to try and leave that platform and i'm like man i'm so integrated now i don't know if that's going to be easy <laughs> yeah that's the that's the plus side for hosts for anything like web hosts podcast hosts it's, it's kind of hard to leave <laughs> yeah yeah no, Which, Mark, mark's a great guy mark's a friend of mine and um he's um, he's building something great there actually he's got he's got a lot of big plans for this year so i would if i were you i would hold on because there's a few things going to be coming up oh yeah we were years. i'm in his community and we yeah. he was he did a live video last week promoting all these new enhancements they're launching this whole new academy uh platform so i'm excited for him and he and i've actually met past two years actually in person he's come over here and spoken at the mid-atlantic podcast conference that was founded by joe pardo here outside of philadelphia mm -hmm. so that's how i met him because uh, my buddy michael o'neill from the solopreneur hour he was my first episode michael o'neill he was one of my old coaches and uh, anyway, so Michael was there speaking. Mark was there speaking. I met those guys. We recorded with them live at the show for my show. And then I ended up coming back this past year and speaking at the same conference. So they welcomed me back as a, it was, it was cause it was a one year anniversary. I told him like I had launched the week of the conference. I had lost the show in 2016. So he's, I was like, Hey, I'm happy to come back. I could talk about what it was like for that one year transition. So yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, th those kind of stories go down so well. Like, what did you do in your first year to get to the stage you're at? What were the kind of pitfalls? All that kind of stuff goes down. Yeah, well. yeah. I need to get to that conference actually. I know Podfest is on right now. Yeah, that's um, ways Podfest the one in Florida. That is exactly yes. Yeah, yeah. and um, that Midwest one was one I came across just last year actually. So I need to get across to them. I'm going to Podcast Movement in July, so I'll be in Philadelphia in at the end of July, but. Yeah. See, that's the big one. Um, yeah, well, yeah. it seems to be a big one and I, I have no excuse not to go to that because it's so close. So okay. I can drive down there. Yes. <laughs> well, you should come then. Yeah. I'm only an hour away. I'm really, I mean, now that we're talking about this, I feel like a slacker. Why did I get a ticket to that? I don't even know if I bought a ticket to that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel they've still got, you know, these conferences all say they're ending their early bird sales and then suddenly they keep going and they keep going. So well, and admittedly, you can do, so here's a fun little hack. Have you ever done the, uh, Michael O'Neill talks about this. Have you been on his show? Uh, no, but I've met him at a couple of events. Oh, I'm surprised he hasn't had you on. Hell, I mean, especially from the podcasting and entrepreneurial world, that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, but anyway, uh, he, he talks about the, the hacking the conferences. And this is a good lesson. Maybe you've done it, maybe you haven't. But if you don't have the money, or the, you know, the over, the, to justify the overhead of going to all these conferences, but you can at least get there, mm -hmm. do the back of the room type thing where you just hang out in the lobby and network and connect with people there. And you're not actually getting, depending on how obviously the conference is laid out. I mean, if they got it on lockdown, well, 
I, I can't, I don't know how it's laid out, but a lot of conferences, he's, he's right. If you don't need to actually go in and get it access to the course content and you're trying to save money, you can at least be there network and make connections. Have you ever done anything like that? I, do you know what? I, I haven't, but a friend of mine did that last year at social media marketing world in San Diego, yeah. went across and I think, do you know, if you're at a stage, if you're very, very early stage, I think it can be kind of tricky. But, you know, if you're, if you're kind of, if you've got a few contacts and you know a few people at an event, I think it becomes really easy. So you go, we, he went along to social media marketing world and he arranged to meet up with me with a few other contacts of his, who all of which brought, you know, people from the conference. So mm -hmm. he ended up in all these groups in the social situations in the evenings there to, you go. to get to meet people, to network, to grow his network and didn't have to pay a penny for it. So yeah, seems like a good way to go about it. Well, it's funny because I was, I was having a tug of war whether or not to go out the social media marketing world this year. Yeah, yeah. And I said, you know, it's not just the ticket. It's the hotel, the travel, the flight. It's on the other side of the country. Now, as a marketing professional, I feel weird about it. So this year, I decided to go with the virtual ticket. I want to okay. see... It seems like they really pack a lot of value into the virtual ticket. I get access to all the content, all the educational sessions. Granted, I'm a very outgoing guy, so I thrive in that face-to-face -face networking environment, so I'm going to miss that. But I'm going to say, you know what, for this year, I got so many other trips planned. I can only do so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I always like to try and do a, a couple of new events every year. I find that if you go more than two years in a row to any particular event, you, you get a lot less value from it. Yeah. For me anyway, at least. I mean, unless you're being invited back to speak or something like that. Yes. Right? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I knew going back to MapCon, it's like, well, it's local, it's easy, so it's kind of no excuse. I want to support Joe. He's trying to grow that as a as an influential event in podcasting. So it's still small, um, but it's gotten bigger and we'll see what happens. But it's like and plus he invited me back to be a speaker. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to grow my public speaking. Perfect. So, so did, you find, did you find you got, so doing those two in a row, that's interesting. Did you find you got much more from the second year as a speaker than you did the first year? I guess it comes down to what, what do you mean by did you get, what more did you get out of it, I guess. I guess from an authority building benefit, right? Automatically, if you're one of the speakers, you automatically yeah. have a different level of authority. Yeah, trust. yeah absolutely. Um, and it was kind of funny because I set a new goal that when I left the corporate days, I had, I have an old suit and I was like, all right, I'm not going to, I'm not a suit guy anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, I took a page from uh, Richard Branson and I said, you know, if I wear a nice suit, I was like, I want to make my money in jeans and spend it in a suit. Right. So I said, okay, from last year, this year's MapCon or 2016 to 2017's MapCon, I said, all right, if I come back and if I get invited back as a speaker, I'm going to buy a brand new suit. And I'm going to rock that puppy down at that conference. So I picked up a nice new three-piece suit. You know, it's a modern cut vest. I, you know, no tie, no tie. And it was, it felt good. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't wear suits all the time anymore, but I was like, man, it was good to rock that suit. And now I've rocked it at three other conferences. I'll do like a, like just a suit jacket and the vest and the dress shirt and a pair of jeans, you know, whatever, do that type of style. But it definitely levels you up when it comes to, how you show up and how you're being perceived. And at that conference, to answer your question, people were like, hey man, I was here last year when you were here. And I'm like, who's that guy? And then I see you roll in this year, rocket a suit, speaking on stage. We're like, whoa, wh what's going on with this guy? So it was interesting. That was the, literally the feedback I got from one of the guys I ended up bringing on the podcast show. So I don't know. I, I, the biggest thing I got was authority building. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Rightly or wrongly, the, those impressions, those, um, you know, superficial first impressions, they make a big difference, don't they? I, I, I used to always wear a jacket on stage. So like a jeans shirt, like you say, and a jacket. Yeah. And um, just because it made me feel a bit more confident, it made me feel like I was more professional. But actually, these days, I speak, when I speak, I just wear jeans and a shirt because that's what I wear when I'm kind of when I'm trying to feel good anyway, I don't, I never wear a jacket in my real life. So I decided why am I doing it on stage? And I feel yeah. better for it actually. I feel like I look better too. So more confident. So obviously I know you're in Scotland and not, you know, England or whatever, but the UK, but um, do you know Chris, uh, Chris Ber Berez Brown? You familiar with that guy? I don't know the name. No. Oh, all right. So he's a speaker and actually I had him on the show and he's from, no, he's not, is he Wales? Man, I can't remember what country he's in. Um, yeah, he's known as, actually, I'll go ahead, I'll share my screen real quick for you. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the guy. Up, he's known as Upping Your Elvis. 
He's a leadership speaker and trainer. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, that's his name, Chris Perez Brown, but he, that's part of his style. Actually, I don't know if I have another image on here on the blog content, but he, uh, he's not the suit guy. Like he's got that nice casual style. He's got some longer hair of that photo. He hasn't pulled back, but he's got, um, hold on a second. Let me see if I have another image on here. He had a new, he had a new book called wake up coming out. There you go. That's kind of like what you're talking about, right? Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Hey, you're confident. You rock your jeans. You got a simple shirt, maybe a jacket, maybe you don't. So yeah. 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 yeah um, absolutely. I, I spoke at, um, do you know, Chris Tucker, Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. So I spoke at his event in November. Um, and that was brilliant. Really good event, by the way, if you fancy coming across the UK, head to that. Uh, but, um, I've heard nothing but good things about his events. Ah, cool. Yeah. So it was really good. Um, but at that, that was, that was one of the first times in a while I'd not worn a jacket. Actually, I just went on in sort of jeans and a nice shirt and that, yeah, it, was, it actually turned out that nobody really there, none of the speakers was really dressed up at all. It was all quite huh. people just being themselves, which I think made a big difference. It was just, you know, a bit more honesty, a bit more trans, a bit more just humans. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to, this is an interesting topic. I, I, I want to hear your feedback because like, this is, this is why I love an open format. We never know what's going to come up. It's funny you bring all this up, right? So okay. now I'm, I, I turned 40 in September. So on the anniversary of my podcast, like, I, hey, it was a big thing. Like, so anyway, do you feel, like, how old are you, by the way? Uh, nearly 40, 38. Uh, there you go. So we're in the same genre, right? You're, yeah. I was like, I'm Gen X, but you're pretty much on the cusp of Gen X, millennial, whatever. Yeah. The point is, what do you think about that? This, there's this, all this, all, all you go, you've been a social media market world. You, I'm sure you follow people on Instagram because you're everywhere like I am. Uh, <laughs> what's up with this? Oh, I'm an entrepreneur, so I can dress whatever way I want. And I think sometimes people are taking it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested to hear your feedback on this because we've, you know, you and I have at least monitored a couple of decades of professional transition. <laughs> I'm yeah. just wondering what your feedback yeah. is. I, yeah, I think it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I have been to events where people that I know and respect, that I do follow people, I won't mention who they are, but there was one in particular I'm thinking of, a guy who I really looked up to actually came along to an event. And I knew kind of what his general sort of personality, appearance, all that kind of stuff was on his from YouTube videos, from podcasts, that kind of thing. But he turned up to the event looking exactly like that, which is very dressed down, like kind of cargo shorts and a kind of ratty old t-shirt. Really? And went, yeah, wow. And went on stage and spoke like, and spoke like that. And I actually, it, I don't know why exactly, but I, it made me think less of him because I just thought, you know, there's a difference. I think there is a difference. There definitely I, is. I, like, I wouldn't say, yeah, you don't need to get a suit on, but you need no. to uh, look like you're making an effort. <laughs> like you're taking it seriously. Like this is, like this is more important. Speak, getting to speak to, you know, 500 people in a room is important. It's a privilege to do that. And I think you need to show that you're taking that seriously in some way. I, I think it comes back to, and I don't, you know, I'll, call, I'll go ahead and call this social respect, I yeah. guess, right? You're in a social area. I'm not questioning the fact that you're confident and you can, Hey, if you can speak wearing cargo shorts, <laughs> more power to you. Yeah. Um, but I also feel kind of what you're talking about here is that what, what is the message we're trying to say? Yeah. I, and I do, I don't want to wear a suit every single time. Right. I, I love to be able to just work a t-shirt and a suit jacket and jeans or whatever. But I think you mentioned earlier when you threw that jacket on, some people use it psychologically as a shield or a, a layer of confidence to level you up. And it shows that you're taking that opportunity seriously. And I think psychologically that would make a lot of us kind of relax a little bit. Cause like, Hey man, I'm rocking my jacket. They see that I'm here. I'm not here to mess around. Yeah. Whereas I, I agree with you, man. If I saw somebody I respect rock on stage with a t-shirt and cargo shorts, I'm like, unless we're in the Bahamas yeah. and you're speaking at a very casual wedding, um, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. Yeah. Yeah. We're well, talking of uh, Chris Ducker's events, you know, t uh, tropical think tank. I know I've seen a lot of the videos from that and they do all just turn up in their shorts and t-shirt, but that's well, you're in the thing. Philippines, right? So it's an intimate little thing as well. It's only 20, 30 people. So uh, in fact, less usually. So yeah, I think there's a, there's a big difference. As soon as it goes above a hundred people or so in a big event and it's really well produced, like the graphics that uh, Chris had behind everyone, just the way they produced the stage was it was amazing. Mm. It would have been it would have been disrespectful uh, to use a slightly strong term to to turn up and not make an effort in that. I think. I think. 
Yeah. And, well, it's funny because I now that I'm talking about this MapCon thing, I think I actually got an email last week. I think he's invited me back to speak again. I'll have to double check that, but that'd be fun. But I, I, this year when I go back, I'm not going to do the full suit. I'm still going to represent who I am. And I, as it was part of my story last year on stage because I had done – and I don't know how much you know about my background, but I had done, I'd left the corporate world and I got to serve in the Western US with the federal government as a wildland firefighter. So I was literally fighting wildfires in the mountains and it was a life changing experience and I'm a health and fitness nut and that just really helped me do that. But it was such a shift, like getting out of your comfort zone, right? You go from farm kid, go chases corporate dreams, chases the big salaries and the, and the titles to going back to school on nights and weekends to do a degree and then, you know, university and then finishes all that. And this says, screw it. <laughs> and I'm going to go be a firefighter for a couple of years. And then, you know, got that out of my system and then tried finding my way again. And then eventually moving towards where I'm today, which is more entrepreneurial and have a podcast show and being a podcast host. So it's like, I think it's important to remind myself, like for listeners out there too, this is for you guys, is what he and I are talking about right now is like, be true to who you are. And I think part of me being afraid to rock the suit again was I was worried about maybe going back to where I was and I realized I didn't like that lifestyle. I didn't like chasing the money, chasing the job titles. And I can actually thank podcasting. I've mentioned this on a couple of shows recently to really get me outside of my, like I'm already outgoing. I'm already a type A personality, right? But the podcast through conversations with people like you has allowed me to just really bring the walls down and just talk about anything to the point where my, like my fiance will overhear me talking and she's just like, what were you talking about on today's show? She's like, I heard random stuff coming up. She's like, you just talk about anything, don't you? And I said, not just anything, but I believe in transparency as a host. And I, don't, I wanna draw people closer. I don't need 50 million downloads. I want to make sure that the people that are downloading this show are really staying true to this brand and I'm really getting through to them with the right co-hosts. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Are you, you've been doing this longer than I have. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's the power of podcasting really. It's the fact that there's something really intimate about audio on its own. There's something, there's something that really breaks down those barriers. You know, you're spe people say that, you know, the, the benefit of media is personality. So you get to show people who you are, you get your personality across. And technically you can do that on video and in podcasts, but with video, there's this really weird barrier. There's the screen between you, this like glass panel between you and the person. There's all these things that you worry about. Suddenly you become self-conscious like we're just talking about, you know, what you're wearing, the lighting, the background, all these things. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's something really intimate about just somebody's voice. It's just, it's pure them, isn't it? Like you're not judging them in anything but their personality. There's nothing superficial here. It's literally just the things that they're saying, things that are formulated in their head that pop out and into your ears. And it's something that just builds huge relationships. I think it's, I've seen it over the years, like going to events and meeting people that have listened to, to my show um, come up to me and they just, they just treat you like a friend. It's so, yeah. it's so cool. It's not like you're meeting a celebrity or something. It's, it's like you're meeting somebody that you, you speak to every week. <laughs> um, so that's just proven to me over the years how valuable podcasting is for, for building trust, for building credibility, for building people that really love what you do and they're willing to, to work with you, to, to champion your cause, to promote you for them. It's just, it's amazing, yeah. Well, I think that's, it's crucial for somebody like yourself. You know, somebody who has literally built a training platform and a support system for people like myself, right? Like I, I, I can say that in probably June, July of 2016, like I was watching your content and reading your content and trying to figure out the podcasting stuff because I'd already been a vor voracious consumer for probably hardcore the past two years, really dabbling here and there for three to yeah. four years. As a listener. And it, yeah, as a listener. Yeah, yeah. And it just got to the point where I was like, Dude, I've got a message to share and I have from my professional sales experience and marketing, I have the gift of gab. So what if I launched my own show? Like what would come out of that? And yeah. so- well, and that, that, <laughs> that is something I love about podcasting as well though. You say there, you've got the gift of the gab and people that have that gift can make a podcast, you know, they have a, maybe a, a slight advantage, but I feel like they have less of an advantage over people who don't have the gift of the gab, who are more insular, more um, introverted. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's a powerful medium for people like that because 
the because it's much less intimidating. Again, you're not worrying so much about your looks, about staring at a camera. You're just you're just speaking to this person. You can imagine this one person on the other end of a phone or something like that and talking to them. And that's I would I'd class me in there. I like I was a really shy kid. I was really shy growing up as well. And even these days, like the, the walking into a, a room at a networking event or even a conference or something like that still fills me with a dread. But but I'm more than happy to sit on the microphone and speak to people like yourself, like make friends with people online and everything just because I've learned how to how to speak online and podcasting was a big factor in that for me. It's, it's a place where I think people, many people who wouldn't otherwise get their voice or the message out into the world can do it. I think mm -hmm. it's powerful that way. Well, it's funny you bring this up. There's actually a gentleman. Oh God, who's, I'm trying, I can't remember which podcast. It might've been podcast websites, like their community, Mark's community. Sure. But a gentleman had posted up there saying, Hey guys, I wanted to turn this, you know, this show on by now. And it's a, kind of like a, I call it podcasters block, but you know, like yeah. a writer's block. And he, yeah. he was really beating himself up in his comments because he said he just, he starts talking and it's not going anywhere. And, mm -hmm. and I just commented back and I said, man, it's okay. You're putting in the reps right now. And it's awkward for all of us in the beginning. And for me, that's why I chose a co-hosting format. Cause I like talking to people and, but other people like he was, I think trying to uh, launch like a self narrated podcast show. Mm -hmm. And for me, that kind of, that was hard for me. I've only done that maybe two or three episodes in the history of this show. And I do two shows a week. So sure. I've only done a couple of solo episodes. And the first one was like, Oh, I don't, I don't have anybody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get out of my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're hard actually. I mean, we did, I, I've done a fair few solo shows these days actually, and I find them relative reasonably easy now, but still, yeah. still hard to make a compelling show like that like you need to be quite a good storyteller and it's still something i'm working on really that's one of kind of one of the things i'm working on the most is learning how to tell the better stories yeah um but yeah it's just there's chemistry isn't there between two people it just makes for more compelling content it's great um yeah it's well it, it was like today's show we we started off talking about our lifestyles yeah, yeah, and yeah. we had more in common than i realized and then obviously we we, we really honed back to what you and i are really doing together professionally here, right? Like we're growing podcast shows. You're actually influencing training and, and, so, and growing other people's brands and their podcasts too. And I think it's powerful because what you just said, there's a lot of people who want to have that conversation. They want to get that voice out there and they're having podcasters block or, you know, writers block or, or you know, voice block, whatever. But um, yeah. I think, it's you know, it's, it has to be done. You have to get it out there. Yeah, That's all I look at it as. It's one of the most common questions we get. I mean, we, so whenever people come to our site, one of the first calls to action to get is to download our how to start a podcast guide. Um, and obviously that's, you know, talking business, that's us share that again. Them onto their, their lead magnet. That's sorry. That's us getting them onto our, um, our email list. Sure. But we send them a 20 email series right away. That's their kind of introduction to us. Uh, over quite a long time. Uh, and one of them is, what are you struggling with just now? It's just a simple question. What are you struggling with in getting your podcast started? And there's there's three things that they always say. The two are quite obvious, like technical stuff. So how do I choose my equipment? And the other one is, how do I uh, edit my show? But the third one, the most common one outside of the technical stuff is, I hate my voice. How can I, how can I change my voice? And it's it's it makes me feel just a little bit sad every time because I'm like, but it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. Everyone's unique. You'll find, I bet you there's people in your life that like you. They don't care what your voice sounds like. They care what you say. They care what that voice says. Um, my fiance so has never listened to one of my shows. <laughs> well, she hears your voice. <laughs> I, I, I think she hears my voice too much. So, but right. It's like, but she loves Joe Rogan. All right, so, okay. and obviously he's a huge podcaster. So, yeah, yeah. um, and I like him too. He's entertaining. Uh, it's interesting to see where his shows go. <laughs> but I clearly follow different content than she does. So it goes to your point. And I think that's a great lesson to anybody listening to this who's been considering, like, again, please go check out podcasthost.com. Um, I mean, heck, I'll tell you right now, but I actually, besides your academy and your other podcasts like PodCraft and the fact that you have guides on there, one of the first things I do remember now, your, your website looked different probably two yeah. years ago. Um, but I remember going there and reviewing podcast equipment. 
like, cool. okay, well, again, that whole getting started thing. Like I was ready to share the voice, but for me, I'm the gearhead. I'm the skier, the mountain biker, rock climber. Like I need yeah. my gear. So <laughs> I literally launched uh, with this microphone and this is yeah. not what people normally launch with. Like nobody goes by as a Heil PR40. Um, I, was say, I was about to say, is that a Heil PR40? <laughs> yeah, it's a Heil. So <laughs> I, 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 again, not recommended for a lot of podcasters because that's yeah. like a $300 microphone or whatever yeah. it goes for nowadays. But you know, I, I have a small mixer board here. I have a Zoom H5. Yeah. So, uh, because I followed Michael's O'Neill's influence of uh, yeah. going with hardware. I didn't want to worry about software failure, stuff like yeah. that. Like, yeah. it's good advice. Yeah. like now I can just talk about it. Like it's so easy, mm-hmm. but you know, two years ago to your point, like my voice wasn't this confident about it. I literally have actually talked to people about how to help them just give them tips. Like I don't charge for it. My buddies are like, Hey man, I'm thinking about launching a show. Quick, can I have a quick chat with you about it? And we'll hop on zoom and do a quick conference call. And I'm like, what? I was like, FYI, I'll give you my tips. But if you want an actual protocol to follow, please reach out to people like you. <laughs> Cause I said, these guys have been doing it in a while. And if you need a system or a support protocol to follow, again, I'm literally basically being your ad right now, <laughs> but because I've used your stuff and it's like, I don't need to recreate the wheel here. Like I'll show you what I'm doing, but in the end I started there. Right. Yeah. So well, I, pre- I appreciate it. Thanks for saying that. Um, but I mean, it's, it's all free. It's like, we, we just review kit. That's um, again, business side of things like a big part of what we do is review stuff. Cause I like playing around with gear. Like you say, we're gear heads, like the shiny things um, and it's affiliate income for the business. So that's how we're, we're always honest about it. Always talk about them truthfully and just really review stuff we quite like. And that, mm. that leads to a good side income for the business. Really. It's good. Yeah, I, I like it. <clears throat> I got to get better into the affiliate stuff. I'm not, mm-hmm. I talk about a lot of stuff, a lot of gear. <laughs> so I've actually been slowly working on building out that section of the site. I, I, like I, I, I'm a voracious consumer of books and, yeah, yeah. and I love yeah, Audible. Thing to recommend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So again, the power of podcasting is just like the power of things like Audible. Mm. I, I, my biggest little tagline that I throw out there now is I tell people like, especially if you drive in a car a lot here in the U S our country is huge. So we have a lot of roads and a lot of drive time. Yeah. I don't know how much commute time you have, but I tell people you have no excuse, like turn your automobile <laughs> into a mobile university. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I look at it. My, um, my wife's traveling to, <clears throat> so our normal commute is actually really short. I only live about a, you know, 20 minute walk or even a, a sort of five minute cycle to my office. So it's not much nice. at all. So my main podcast listening these days is going out for lunch because I tend to go for a walk for lunch every day, go out for about an hour because I sit at the computer all day otherwise. Um, and it, so I listen to a lot of stuff that way. But my wife is going to Edinburgh right now, which Ooh. is capital of Scotland, uh, about uh, an hour and a bit south of us. It takes her about an hour and a half to get there in total. And okay. she's just listening to music all the way and it's driving me crazy. I'm like, why, why are you wasting this time? There's all this stuff out there that you can listen to and learn and enjoy and get entertained and you're listening to music. I am, <laughs> I am so with you right now. I'm, I mean, again, for our video watchers, there's, there's literally watching me laugh. I'm being red in the face because every time I get into my car, uh, up until two months ago, real quick, um, I always had to bring up the Pandora app so, so my fiance could listen to music because I don't have FM, AM. I have no stations programmed in my car. Mm-hmm. I've never have. I've, I literally stream nothing but content. I'm either listening to podcasts and I got one of my clients. I do a lot of travel for them to help grow their business. I go three hours this earlier this week, three hours North of here to Syracuse, New York, up near the great lakes. So a whole state away. I was up there on business. What do you think I'm doing on that drive? I am listening to audio books and podcasts. So yeah. Yeah. when she gets in the car, uh, now recently, now when she gets in the car, if she hasn't already listened to all of his episodes, we'll put on Joe Rogan. So at least yeah. she'll let me stream a podcast now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but she yeah. doesn't want to hear me it. playing my show. Entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> real quick time check. We have a heart out. Yeah. Do, you have a, do you have a heart out here for nine? Or, uh, well, no, nine okay. my time. Okay for about longer, yeah. Okay. So... I love the fact though, that you and I have some similar um, <laughs> relationship experiences. I, 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 again, I appreciate people who love music. I love occasional music once in a while, but I just, I've never been a hardcore, I guess, music geek about it. I don't know. Like even when I work out, I don't listen to music. I, I work out. I, yeah. 
I'm exactly I don't know. the same. I, music has the, I, I do enjoy music and I like um I like it in a certain context, but it just it, it doesn't give me any kind of entertainment if it's in mm-hmm. you know I can't listen to music solely. You know, some people listen to albums to listen to the lyrics and the melodies and all this kind of stuff. It just doesn't interest me at all. But it, no. I do listen to a bit more these days, actually, in the office. I've found a few channels on Spotify, which are maybe you know, like electronic kind of downbeat music. Oh, with no uh, no vocals. No lyrics, yeah. no lyrics at all. And it's just kind of nice beats. And I, I find it's actually, it helps me helps me focus a little bit because it kind of drowns out the irregular noises outside that maybe distracts you sometimes and i quite enjoy it it's like it's company if nothing else because i i usually have matthew in here with me so he's my um one of my employees but often he's not here and it's just it's somebody it's you know a bit of company with me while i'm working and there was actually science to that too as far as like brain wavelengths um okay. i don't know if I, when i so when i went back to school as an adult student you know to, get, to finally finish that degree i i was looking for ways to hack my brain and like, mm-hmm. cause I'm working all day and then I'm, I gotta go to school on nights and weekends, you know, to finish my, my, my bachelor's of science. I have a, in marketing and psychology. Mm-hmm. So I really geeked out on the psych and I dig, I'm digging, digging, digging. I'm like, okay, how can I hack my study? Cause my studying protocols were different from when I was, you know, 18 and now I'm like, you know, 28, you know, doing, doing school. You don't think the same. Yeah. Uh, your, your, your multitasking processes are different. So yeah. Yeah. I found, I'm Googling, and I remember this day, it's called iMusic. Yeah. It was a company from Canada, and they took classical music and then underlaid in other frequencies into the music. Oh. And they had different CDs, and each CD was specifically designed for a certain type of wavelength. So if you're looking for athletic exercise, like for peak athletic performance, you listen to that disc. If you're looking for studying, you use that disc. If you're looking just to be able to read and cancel out stuff around, you just be able to read stuff, not study, because that's two different wavelengths, they had a disc for that. Interesting. I Mm. never, I I haven't used that in years, but that's what I use to help me kind of, I don't know, peak my performance in studying. I so. think I know, I know, I knew someone similar. I, so I've experimented over the years with uh, meditation. Um, and I suck I at it. I know, totally, I'm rubbish at it. I, I, I'm lucky if I manage 20 seconds. With I, 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 everybody says it's not about the time. quantity of time. It's at least you're doing it. But I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm lucky if I get five seconds. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, see, I think that's nonsense because at the end of 10 minutes when I haven't managed anything, I'm more frustrated than I was when I started. But, um, <laughs> but one of the things I found over that time was that uh, there was, it was a similar type of thing. It was a meditation background you know, you get apps that give you like tracks and stuff to listen to. And this one said there was chimes in it with certain frequencies that sort of calmed down your brain and stuff like that. And there's, there's that, um, there's a little headset you can put on, I think, that does the same kind of thing as well. Hmm. That I found it at one point. And being a, a gadget geek, I, I almost bought it, but I, I managed to stop myself just in time. But, um, but yeah, I'm not sure how well it works, but it was something that I, I thought about trying. But yeah, it, it makes sense that, you know, certain frequencies, certain types of sounds will change your, you know, your perceptions. Your Well, they use it now with, um, you ever use white noise apps for yeah, sleeping? Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. thing, right? Yeah. There's a, you're, well, that's a little bit different though. With the white noise apps, it's kind of like what you're doing in your office. You're looking yeah, for something yeah. to cancel out other noise yeah totally yeah, and that's yeah. really what white noise is like hey yeah. you're while you're sleeping you're teaching your brain to only hear that yeah. so if somebody makes a noise in the next room or something like that you shouldn't hopefully not hear that your yes. your brain is focused on that so yeah, yeah yeah and my fiance can't stand that stuff either she she did agree to buy a fan so we have this like special little like mini turbo fan and yeah. i pivot it uh, so it just shoots straight up it doesn't even we don't use the air for anything but just that yeah. quiet sound of a fan yeah we, Works for we actually, we tried, uh, so I got, I subscribed to one of these, uh, these fan box things for Tim Ferriss a long time ago, you know, the, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like the mixed kits, all the hacks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they send you a box every month and it's curated by celebrities, personalities, whatever you want to call it. And he's, so I got his for a few years, a few years, a few months. Uh, and there was a white noise machine in one of them because he mm. struggles with sleep. And I was like, I would never have bought this, but actually it's great. It was, it was specifically for making white noise, but it's just a fan with little holes in the side. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I used it for months, but my wife hated it. She, she like vetoed it at the end. But the place it did come in handy, I don't know if this is useful to anyone listening, is we then had our second child very soon after that. And that's when mm-hmm. it was handy. It was like, it kept her calm. So we put it on um, 
And obviously our sleep was terrible at that point anyway. So my wife was caring less. And this thing just kept our baby asleep a bit more. Interesting. This, this regular noise. In the we don't bring up uh, parenting tips very often uh, on this podcast. This is good. Yeah, so you ended, up, <laughs> you ended up taking a really cool white noise machine that was technically probably designed for adult use. Yeah. yeah. And it ended up benefiting a child. Yeah, yeah. Well, it benefited both of us because she slept a bit more, and that means. Oh yeah. <laughs> there was a bleed over there. I love that. I love yeah, that. That was handy. <laughs> from from what I hear, I mean, again, my fiance and I, we don't, we're not going to have children. We don't. We're just not interested. We're we're yeah, trying to travel, and I, I've, like I said, I've coached kids for years. Like I yeah. had to parent, you know, part time parent like fifty kids at one time. I'm like, yeah. I'm good. So I respect people who choose to be parents and give back that way and create other life forms. And, and then I hear all your, the horror stories of like, <laughs> you're not giving us a horror story, but I'm just trying to imagine what it was like before yeah. the white noise fan. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. that does not sound enjoyable no, to it's, me. It's, it's funny you say that because I, um, I have offended more than just a few people and have become known in my group of friends and acquaintances as the person who talks people out of having kids. <laughs> but I wouldn't give my I love my kids for all like more than anything in the world I wouldn't wouldn't give them up for anything would take a bullet from all that standard stuff but um it's hell <laughs> in a lot of ways <laughs> but, but, but Colin everybody everybody says well Scott you say that now but when it's your kid it's different yeah. and I'm like no. no I mean you could tell you keep telling yourself that <laughs> I mean, it's your kid so it's different uh, no, you still have to deal with screaming children and poopy diapers and oh, yes. all the stuff yeah. that I don't want to deal with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's, there's good things to it that make it worth it, but there's so many things. Yeah. Like going biking. I, I've been, yeah. My, the frequency of going mountain biking before kids and after kids is like, it changes. Just different. Yeah. A, a good friend of mine, he barely gets out once a month now yeah. and it drives him nuts. But he also says, hey, man, this is the sacrifice that I have to make to be a great dad. And I told him, like, then you just need to start buying some trailers and stuff and do resistance training yes. and just hitch that kid up yeah, it's and training. More training. <laughs> go ride a big paved trail. And you got an extra 20 pounds on there or whatever. And you got resistance yeah. training. <laughs> yeah. But on this, on this kind of <clears throat> a serious note there, like I... Yeah. I think I try and talk. So people that haven't had kids yet, I wouldn't obviously, we chose to, and I love the fact that we do and get so much reward out of it. But if you haven't had kids yet, knowing a lot of people feel like they have to, it's like mm. a pressure thing. It's like society tells you that you should and all this kind of stuff. People feel pressure. So they end up doing it just because of that rather than because they want to. And that's the ones that I try and talk out of it because I try and tell them all the terrible things and that I'm sure you can have a, an absolutely brilliant fulfilling life without them in fact a lot of ways slightly better <laughs> but um but a lot of people don't like to hear that i find um so yeah i have offended a few people over the years well i think it goes back to your point on again kind of full circle here for our listeners whether you're maybe you've been thinking about becoming a cyclist or a mountain biker or you're thinking about becoming a skier or you're thinking about becoming a podcast co you know, host or you're thinking about becoming a parent like it's going to be a different experience for everybody. There's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be your, there's the biggest thing is getting yourself outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And in the end, if you want to take that step, that risk, freaking go for it. Like yeah. why, why live in a life of what ifs? That's how I look at it. Yeah. I've always, I've always done that. Yeah. You have to want it for your reasons. I think that's the most important. Yeah. Part. Be a little selfish. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like I did the podcast cause I was like, you know what, what if, like, what if I, built a bigger brand out of it and stuff like that. That was the selfish piece. I'm like, there could be some success that comes out of this. If nothing else, it increases my online authority. But then since launching the show, uh, and actually I'll, uh, this would be a great way to kind of bring us towards the end is, like I, I recently, yesterday, I picked up uh, these new custom hats. I had logoed up. And I have a bunch of different colors. So I'm, I'm doing prototypes so I can figure out what I want. And I post it on Instagram because I want to get people's feedback and stuff. And then I have a local guy here who I met through mountain biking. Uh, he showed up after a big storm hit our local park here that we have single track mountain biking trails at that I help volunteer and maintain. And it was all, there was like 30 trees blown down. And the local county that manages it, the county, they're like, we don't have the resources to clean this up. And I was like, well, I want to ride my trails. And former wildland firefighter, I'm a yeah. surgeon with a chainsaw. So I said, all right, game on. So he shows up. I meet him. Volunteers. I got 
we put together tools now, all right, guys, we're going to go in, we're going to open these trails up, you know, stand back. So he and I are just blazing with chainsaws. People come up behind us with rakes and opening the trails. And, you know, within two weekends, we had everything open. Yeah. And so we, we bonded over that. Yeah. And then I tell him that he's been, he's a former personal trainer. He had put on some weight and he was trying to become, you know, a better father uh, all this stuff going on. He had been through a lot of mental stuff. I, I, you know, he had gone through periods of depression. Like I learned all about this guy. Like he's just being so honest. And again, mm-hmm. shout out to Brian Strausser of the Strausser Project. Yeah, you know I'm talking about you, bro. And <laughs> so he turned in. He's turned into one of my biggest fans. Like he's always sharing the podcast. Um, literally yesterday, I, I shared his post. Um, he, I, I, I drove to his work yesterday after picking up the hats right around his lunch break. I, I text him, Hey, what's your lunch break? I drive to his office where he works at and I hand deliver him one of the hats. And I said, I already took a photograph of this cause I'm going to figure out which ones I want. But I'm like, here, this is for you. Don't pay me for it. Thank you for being a fan. Like I'm always like dropping him stuff because yeah. he's a fan, but it's more than that. Like we've become friends and he's yeah. bared his soul. He's even been on the show and we talked a lot about that. And like that stuff where, if I never would have launched a podcast, would he and I have that relationship? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think so, right? It's interesting. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if these, these are topics you ever bring up as a, as a trainer or a, you know, an influencer to podcast hosts out there, but it's like, you don't know where this is going to go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's all those side benefits that come up. I mean, people talk about the kind of the obvious ones, like getting to talk to more people, like we're getting to know each other now and that's something that might continue or not. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's, you meet all these people on these shows that you, um, you get all these benefits out of, but then, yeah, there's all these side ones as well, even down to the fact that uh, there's a group of people. So for example, in Dundee, um, who are all, all run their own businesses. The only reason I met them is through one guy who, um, I met through my podcast training. So if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't have met this whole group of people that are now some of my best friends in the city. Um, my, one of my, some of my support network, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, crazy things come out of unexpected activities, I think. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty, again, kind of bringing us back full circle to the podcast host. And again, ladies and gentlemen, podcasthost.com is that take these risks, whether it be mountain biking or podcasting, but like yeah. take a risk and you don't know where it's going to go. You don't know the people you're going to meet, the people you're going to talk to. That's, that's the biggest thing that I've gotten out of this and I'm loving it. And like I'm, the, the show's not slowing down. I, I keep letting it, it's slowly growing. It's not like a it's not one of these like flash in the pan, all of a sudden you got a million downloads type of launches, but that's actually harder to come by these days uh, in the real world, I think. Far, far, yeah. Far. Um, well, listen, to help bring the show to a close and respect your time, I always have my co-hosts close the show out, basically a final thought, a final comment, whatever it may be, um, kind of like an all-encompassing message. You know, is there, is there something that's, you know, all your years in podcasting and everything that you've learned along the way, is there a message that you'd want to put out there to the world that our listeners can basically remember about you in case they forget everything else you and I talked about today. (laughs) I think probably went through a few things we talked about today, wasn't it? It's about uh, partly about that, that being yourself. And I I know that's a cheesy line, but it comes down to that, that comment I made earlier about people hating their voice, having the confidence that, you know, you have a place in the world, you have a voice, you have a message, you've got unique skills. You just need to find that somehow you've got a unique experience that somebody else will find useful and you're doing a disservice to the world if you don't put that out there. So spend a bit of time just thinking about that. Think about what has happened to you over your life? What kind of combination of things? I think that's where the interesting stuff comes. It's the combinations. So not like um, you learn to be a firefighter. That's, a, that's an interesting story. That's one thing, but there's lots of other people have learned to be a firefighter. But go put that alongside mountain biking and suddenly there's two things that go together and you might have a unique slant on things because of those two uh, skills, those two experiences coming together. And everyone out there has got that. You know, there's a couple of things that come together to create a unique perspective. And that's your voice. And don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of the way you're relating it. Just do it in your own way. Don't be afraid to put it out there. Treat it as an experiment. You know, nobody listens to the first few episodes anyway. There's a secret. <laughs> so just try it and see what happens. And you'll get better at it with time. And Yeah. So put it out there and see what, see what happens with it. I love that. That's powerful. Hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, put it out there. 
okay, I can, I can shorten it up right there. That's the whole point and everything we should be doing in life is get your message out there, put it out there. And if you've been considering a little bit about trying to understand more about the podcasting world and what it's like behind the scenes for somebody like myself and with the Live the Fuel show, or you're just trying to understand this exciting growth of this industry and this profession of podcasting, go check out the podcasthost.com because I did many years ago. <laughs> so, uh, so again, ladies and gentlemen, that was the man, the myth, the legend, Colin of the podcasthost.com. Please check him out. Check out his academy. Check out his resources. I'll have everything linked in the show notes like we always do. And again, his, on his point, get your message out there. Put yourself out there. That's another Live the Fuel show. Thank you for listening in, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. And you're free of the pod. I just let the video run extra. So, cool. Thanks, but, uh, I really appreciate that. That was like, uh, yeah, you, you did far more um, promotion of what we do than was needed. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, I just, yeah, I, I go with what feels right. And me being a sales and marketing professional, I made a goal that I never want to have to worry about my co-hosts having to worry about promoting themselves. And <laughs> For you, it's easier because I've used your content. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really nice to nice to know. That's great that it's helped you out. So, yeah, that's there you go, man. It's like I. Uh, oh, who's the other guy I was thinking of? Um, who's the other big guy that everybody follows who tries to learn about podcasting? For podcasting, you've got Cliff Ravenscraft, Cliff Daniel J. Cliff. Yeah, okay, cool. I, I. Tr no offense to him, I respect him and what he's done. I could not follow his content. I. Really? It goes back to what we now were talking about, how certain things click and the right people align yeah, yeah. was not vibing with it. And the way he wanted me, you know, whether he was saying to launch a show and everything else, I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So I researched more of your stuff. Then I ended up talking to Mike and then Michael, I, you know, I was in his coaching community and the, yeah. you know, proudly unemployables like, and all that. So, yeah. And then, uh, Boom. Yeah. And Cliff, obviously Cliff's a really good example of that whole personality thing, actually, because he's his unique set of skills. Like he was a, a pastor before and then sort of working just to his story actually lends himself. So he gets really fanatical fans in particular mm -hmm. areas, people with that same kind of background, I think. But yeah. Everyone, and that's great for him. That. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. And, that's what you should do, really. But I think that's a powerful because again, as you could have kept going with other influencers like yourself, but that's the whole point. It's like there is enough out there now to find one that clicks with. So like people yeah, watching this definitely. on YouTube, like maybe you go to his website and you don't follow everything that Colin says, but then there's mm -hmm. other resources out there. It's just, I'll just go ahead and plug it. I yeah, yeah. followed this easily. It was easy. So thank you. <laughs> so keep doing what you're doing, man. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll keep mountain biking and skiing as well. Oh yes. Uh, I'm actually going skiing tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, I, I'm actually installing a new bike hanging system in my garage actually this weekend too, because uh, cool. I, I gotta, I gotta show off the shiny stuff better. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got too many. <laughs> uh, there's that. Yeah. Well, my one buddy just, he just got in two more bikes. He literally has like six bikes. I'm like, why do you, I love my gear, but six bikes, like, yeah. What are you going to do with all that? Well, there's another thing about the, the whole kids thing. Like we've got, we used to have uh, four or five bikes each. So it was close to 10 bikes in the garage for just me and Kate, my wife. And then the kids came along and now we've got like two each for them too. So we've now got to- So you don't park the car in there at all? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I barely park myself. I can barely get myself in there. Well, again, to your point, you get to commute very close. You can bike, you can walk, you can run. Yeah. So I love that lifestyle piece. That's great. Yeah. Um, admittedly, this is my home office, so I don't- have to travel unless I'm doing it for clients. Uh, I literally, I get bored of the home office. Yesterday I was working at a Whole Foods. They have a nice cafe in one of these fancy grocery stores. I go work at a Starbucks. I, I'm mobile, man. I, yeah. Yeah. when I have Wi-Fi, I can go and work anywhere. <laughs> I actually, I could, I could be mobile, but I, I'd come here a lot. Actually, I just like having a regular place. Actually, all my stuff's in the right place. And oh yeah, and actually, the way things worked out, I'm just at my normal desk just now, which is set up all right. But uh, the studio's next door. Nice. Um, so we've got the proper recording space. I, I like the fact that you did it this way. I knew you had a studio and I was like, oh, cool. Okay. He's got like another recording area. That's awesome because it gives you a different, I, I think, feel. So I actually, I like doing interviews. I, if I'm running an interview myself, I always do it in there, but I like doing interviews just in our normal, kind of informal. Just where I See? Normally. <laughs> yeah. I Cause then you can just hang out and then yeah. if people walk through like Matt or whatever, oh, well, <laughs> Uh, so are you in there alone today or Matt, is Matt off today? Or? Yeah, Matthew's off today, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. On a Friday. He's just Monday to Thursday. So yeah. Nice. So it's just All right. music for company, just Alexa.
Oh, Alexa. <laughs> well, I already have a Roomba, so we'll oh, right. we haven't got we haven't gotten into that world yet, Alexa's, yeah, yeah. but uh it's probably going to come. I don't know. I don't know. We, we named a uh, Roomba, our Roomba, we named him Marshall. So <laughs> Marshall does a great job. He cleans the house, you know, three times a week. He's really worth his, uh, his, his pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> just, just remember to empty the little, um, the little compartment that stores all the dirt. That's all you got to do. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, we have, we have a coon hound, uh, an English red tick coon hound dog. Cool. And he's, yeah, I don't realize there's that much hair until Roomba vacuums it all up. And I'm like, Oh, huh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I fancy one of them as well. Be good. Um, yeah, uh, apparently it's rare, the dog we have, because people see him all the time. They're like, oh my God, is that a red tick? I'm like, you know what that is? Like, yeah, you don't see like the reddish, brownish coonhound that way. I'm like, okay. Really? I, I don't know. That's my fiance's dog. I mean, yeah. now he's our dog, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so. Do you think, are you, did you say you weren't going to podcast movement this year then? Or are you thinking about it? Hold on. Is that Philly? The Philly one? Philly one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably go to that. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I can't not go. It's a local conference. I was back and forth because I heard mixed feedback Mm -hmm. and recent mixed feedback. I don't, I don't know. And someone's like, well, a couple people were upset with uh, what's his name who hosts it. I don't know. And I've met them. They've been, they, they've, they, cause they were there last year and they flew, yeah. they flew into Philly to check out Philly for venues to consider it for this year. And I got to meet those guys with Joe Pardo who founded MapCon. So they're all, we're all connected through there. Yeah, yeah. And I reached out to Joe saying, Hey, are you going to podcast movement? And I think he said, well, yeah, because it's local, but he's like, I'm not going to be like hardcore ingrained into it. I'm like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> like, is there anything I need to be aware of? So yeah. I don't know. I, I can't knock anything until I try it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I've always enjoyed it. I've been to two of the four I had to miss last year, but it, it's always been good when I've been yeah. there. So. And you definitely are coming after that? or Yes. Yeah. Awesome. It's booked and everything. So, yeah. is, is Mark coming? He is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. He's right. out in PodFest just now as well. Oh, then we definitely got to catch up then. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, That'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I always bring my travel kit just in case I end up rocking out a pod or something like that. I don't know. It, yeah. it happens. So, yeah, um, yeah. if nothing else, it'd be great to really connect up better. And yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the hang- last time I hung with Mark. Well, no, the first MapCon, he he flew in with some kind of special vodka for Michael O'Neill. Uh, right. It was it was it had like a picture of a of a bison on it on a, a, a but it was a it was a, it was a buffalo indigenous to Europe. I don't know. And we we sat there drinking vodka after the, after the conference. So I was like, okay, um, yeah, yeah, it was fun. It'd be cool to catch up with Michael. Actually, I met him at Social Media Marketing World just briefly, really. But um, yeah, he seemed like a really nice guy. So yeah, and, and that's where you know I need to go to that because I'm not making it down to the one in Florida, mm-hmm. and I'm not physically going to Social Media Marketing World. Mm-hmm. All the reason why is because I also I'm committed to going to a newer event that I found two years ago called Thrive Make Money Matter. Oh, okay, and right. that is beyond podcasting. That is yeah, yeah. entrepreneurs teaching each other how to literally make money matter in business and in life. Mm-hmm. So everything is centered around aligning yourself with a bigger purpose. And, um, it's powerful. Like he's mm-hmm. the guy who founded his name is Cole Hatter. You should check it out. It's called yeah, attendthrive.com. Right, okay. And, uh, we were, we were literally, you heard about the big shooting in Vegas. Uh, I'm not sure actually. The, the largest mass shooting in history in the U S was, was, was in Las Vegas, Vegas a few months uh, back. Okay. Oh, so, right. oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I was there. Yeah. We, we were there. <laughs> so our conference let out that night mm-hmm. and big, big time names like uh, Grant Cardone mm-hmm. spe- have spoken the last two years at this conference. So, so right. he was there. So him and his whole posse went to the Mandalay Bay where the shooting was. And he was there for another, he was having a private investors type of uh, community meeting with his followers when the shooting went down. Really? So I, and then I was literally driving past the shooting. Didn't even know the shooting was about to happen. Drove past in an Uber because mm. I decided to get a red, a uh, red eye flight out of Vegas. Just to, I'm like, all right, conference is done. I need to get home. Yes. And I check in for my flight. And then all of a sudden all the planes are grounded and the TVs start lighting up. And I was like, holy crap, I just drove past that. Like, yeah. so just missed the shooting and it was crazy. So, yeah. Mental. but on the bigger picture, a 10 thrive is an amazing event. I went to the first one in San Diego because Michael O'Neill was like the kind of like the mater D like he was kind of like helping, you know, run it on stage. Oh, really? cool. And then, uh, so I went out there to support him and that's, and I got hooked on it and I love the message and what they do. That event continues to grow every single year. Powerful people. John Lee Dumas has been there. He's spoken at the event. 
um, a lot of big time speakers like, uh, you ever hear of chicken soup for the soul, that old oh, yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. So he, he spoke not this year, but the last year that a, a lot of big names, man. Like oh, cool. you ever hear of shark tank, the show? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Robert Herjavec spoke the first year. So yeah, he's bringing in, he's right? bringing in some world-class big names exactly. to speak. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So you can see that on the website, but I, that's something that if you're looking to find an event that's different than every other event out there, mm-hmm. and it literally is trying to get your mindset to a bigger purpose, mm-hmm. that's what I love about that event. It's unlike any other conference or event I've ever been to because it's about being there and helping other entrepreneurs and helping each other literally level up in life. And it was like, wow, like you, you literally come out of there wanting to thrive and do more in the world. It's powerful. Well, I'm th- thanks for telling me because I'm looking for, I'm going across for podcast movement, but I was looking for one other event to go to. So yeah, I would, look, again, if I had a choice, I would, I would skip all my other podcast conferences and just go to that because, yeah, and now, cause now I commit now I go every year now, this will be my yeah. third year going back. So it's, so, yeah. It, because the beauty is he changes up the speakers every year. Yeah. The, the, the crowd has gotten bigger. He's going to have it in Vegas again this year. Um, it, it's, it's a good event. It's a powerful I'm message. I'm signing up for, uh, for the list. So they'll let me know when it's free. When it's opening again. It looks like tickets aren't for sale. Yeah, he did an early, because I buy the tickets at the event for the next year. So I already had a ticket. And then he did like an early access a few weeks ago. Uh, he reopened it at the prices that we paid at the event. Um, and then... I don't know. The first year they used to have an affiliate link. I'm waiting to see if they're going to give me an affiliate access because I try and share people that because if I get enough affiliate referrals, they'll level me up to more of a VIP package where I'll be able to hang backstage with all the speakers and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I still, I still just buy the basic ticket because there's so much powerful networking there. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I might go VIP this year. We'll see. Uh, if it depends on how much I want to invest in my, my network yeah, <laughs> of exposure. Indeed, so, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sometimes worth it, sometimes not. I find with those things, but exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, thank you again for coming on the show, man. Um, like I said, I I respect your following and your message and everything you do. So it was an honor getting you on. And oh, that. if there's anything that I can do, obviously to properly, uh, if there's anything additional you need in that blog content besides what you already provided, your social media and the websites, please let me know, and I'll obviously build it into the content. But, um. Yeah, cool. No, Happy to you. promote. If there's anything I can do to to help you next few months or whatever, then just let me know. Just fire it through. Yeah, absolutely, sir. Fun. Had a blast. Yeah. Well, and then I, if, if nothing else, we'll probably see each other in Philly. In Philly, so. indeed, indeed. Yeah, just we'll stay in touch on that. I don't know how do you how do you normally when you come into a local conference and you reconnect with people. Like, how do you like to reconnect? And we just we just start emailing each other. Like, because I did that email, last year. Email or Twitter, I suppose. Yeah, usually. As much yeah, like I was methods. tweeting. I think I tweeted Mark, and then. I think we actually yeah. Facebook messaged each other because I'm in his private Facebook group too. Yeah, yeah. We, we did email, didn't we, before this? Obviously. Yeah, well, actually also, um, did I add you to the fuel tank yet? That's my private group? Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. If, that, if that's cool with you, I'll add you in there because then it. it's, yeah. yeah. And then because uh, I'm growing that with all, most, I've been adding most of my podcast co-hosts in there because mm. I think it's a great way to build out more connections. So Cool, um, well, that sounds good. Oh, that's is there anybody like, that I could send your way? Uh, or for interviews. Oh, whatever. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you like to right see? Right now we're on a break actually from PodCraft. I need to, I need to figure out what we're going to do for the next season, but I appreciate the offer. I'll, okay. I'll drop you a line if that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I always try, if, like, now that I've had so many co-hosts on, I literally try and get co-hosts connected to other people saying, Hey, yeah. what do you, if you have your own show, what can I send you? Or if they're trying to get on other shows, great. Um, like if you haven't been on Michael O'Neill's show, I'm surprised. Like, do, do you want to get on his show or he, you know him? Been, yeah. No. Well, I, we just met briefly, so I mean, oh. if you don't mind, that would be. If you don't. Yeah, mind, I'll plug you because I'm in. I'm in his cool. Facebook group, so I'll just like, yo, Michael, man, you got to get Colin on. <laughs> oh, thank you. Be yeah, because you met him last year or this year. Yeah, so I think he knows. He, yeah, he, he'd, he'd recognize the name at least. I think. <laughs> I yeah. Hope. Well, and he's all buddy, buddy with Mark. So if, if yeah, that's a whole, yeah. that you got to, we have to, we have to close that inner circle. That's got to happen. So, <laughs> all right, I'm going to, I'll reach out to Mike because cool. he and I go way back now and I actually have his cell phone. I'll just text him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. I'm putting you into, so I'm putting you into the way I usually do it for meetups is I'm putting you into Nimble just now. I'm putting you in as Philadelphia. So that means when I, when it comes to, uh, arranging that, I'll remember where you are. Oh, interesting. I'll have to play with okay. that. That's fun. 
I've never right. used that feature. Well, good, no, sir. That's good. I like that, actually, because whenever I go to an event or even just go to a city for a weekend or something, I tend to type into my Nimble like locations, and it'll show me all the people that I know in that place. Um, so it just helps you kind of jog your memory for connections. I like that. Yeah, all that's right. good. See, I learn about new tech all the time. I never know who I'm going <laughs> Yeah, cool. Dude, right. we've, been, we've been friends on Facebook since 2016. Did you know that? I... <laughs> I'm not sure I did. <laughs> cool. I, I was just adding you to the fuel tank and it said friends since 2016. I'm like, really? and it took me this freaking long to get you on the show. I feel guilty now. So <laughs> I'll, need to, I'll need to get you on Podcraft actually one of the coming seasons because um, you've been doing this for so long now. I'm sure you've got tons of stuff to share. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, people still think I'm weird because I'm doing Zoom instead of Skype. I was like, no, well, I, I got tired of Skype. Yeah, we do that too. See? Yeah. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, sir, I will let you get back to your day. Uh, I'm going to go in and go, actually, I'm going to go do a workout. So I've got to balance my day. So yeah, absolutely. I'm going to for a walk now. It's lunchtime. It's a bit Perfect. Lunch, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> All right. Talk to you well, soon. Catch up soon. Take care. All right. Talk to you later.